I say it's Yonix. All right. Um, and then SI. I actually had this problem defining SI for a long time because I was trying to reconcile the different definitions from Socionics and from Dario. And I did three events. Uh, three of them were with Victor and two of them were with Dario and two of them were with... Oh, it's, it's hard to say. I did three events with Victor and Dario on SI, but Victor and Dario were only together in the first and the third ones. And so in the first one, we had Dario going through his EEG data to actually show what is SI from his point of view. And like it, it, there was a lot of... Um, so Joyce, have you got his book, Neuroscience of Personality, Dario's book? Yeah. Right, yeah. okay, so you know what I'm talking... So it's like, you might have talked about this in other videos, like there's certain things where guardians become very specialist in the way they're active, like their job sort of like leaves its mark on the brain because they get very good at doing like one particular thing. Uh, well, not just one, but you know what I mean? A few things they can really hone in and become masters of it. And you can sort of see that in the brain activity. Um, so yeah. we did that. The second one that we did with Victor without Dario is Victor was giving the socionics definition of SI, which is all about internal bodily harmony and comfort sensor. And I'm like, that's true. There, that, there is that to SI. So, for instance, because we know guardians are very much interested in their health. And as Kersey wrote, most medical doctors are guardians. Most nurses are guardians. And as Jeff says, I love Jeff's quote about this. Guardians will tell you about their medical problems. That is just true. Um, so we can see that Socionics has captured part of the truth there. And so I was trying to put these all together. And then also, there's Carl Jung's definition of SI, which was like, and so I thought, so I've tried to integrate the three different definitions of SI that we have. Carl Jung, where he's talking about, you know, the subjective sensing, almost like the artistic eye, the vision of the artist, the individual idiosyncratic vision of the artist. You've got... What, the way we understand it in MBTI, which is very much like essence of guardian, like the instinct of guardians to want to go towards authority and follow best practice, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the socionic, and then the uh, the socionics version, which is uh, the comfort sense and stuff. So I think that all of those three are part of the puzzle that is SI, because when we look at guardians. We see that. Oh, yeah. And one, I, I have a question that I would like you to ask every, a guest, Joyce. Every time you interview a guardian, uh, I know there's not that many on YouTube in, involved in typologies. Ask them, what do you think of description in novels? And I think they like it. They, I think they like lots of sensory description in novels because to them it's very evocative. And to me, that would be an example of their imaginative subfunction of SI. And I have this thing where, like, like I've got here, that it might not necessarily be expressed for temperament reasons, because the arts is not a stable career from a guardian point of view. Like they want, they'll, they'll probably want to do a proper day job and then put their artistic uh, interests to one side, whereas an artisan is more likely to pursue a career in the arts. Um, so I put here, many imaginative guardians are frequently uncreative as a profession because they see the arts as too risky a career. Also the temperament goes to what has already been created, i.e. the conventional. So guardians are more likely to be derivative stroke classical. And then I've written here, I know some ISFJ resemblers who write poetry, uh, Jamie and Natalie, uh, they're on, Twitter yeah. as that one ISFJ and that chill uh, and something like the chill ISFJ. I think that they've got Twitter names like that. Yeah. And they both write poetry. Yeah. And they they're do. both and they're both guardians. So I could say I think that's an example of the imaginative subfunction of SI. Uh, and I think that ISFP could actually use 
SI more to that end, just because the, the type is overall creative, because it's an artisan. But the function is because SI is a strong, unvalued function in ISFP. Um, but that part of SI that's about imaginative. Um, so any questions, Joyce, about these sub functions of SI? Yeah, it, it's really interesting. It's Jonathan, really- Jonathan's thinking, who's the host? <laughs> <laughs> Look, what I like to say is like, when I invite on an extroverted intuition user, what will happen is they'll talk over everyone. <laughs> everyone. It's a, it's NE likes to generate all the ideas. So uh, when you're talking about one idea, it'll lead you to another idea and then you'll keep talking. <laughs> and it's amazing, I love it. I love it so much. Um, I feel like you really show your function stack through your theory. So you you tell you tell us about like um, the SI and how you define SI and that's super SI to define SI that way <laughs> like to to look for the particularity of the definition of SI is very SITI of you Ben so it's amazing I, I love it I love all of it <laughs> part of it is I don't want to pretend I don't want to pass off somebody else's work as my own I want to give the credit to part of it is wanting to be to to give credit. And another part is maybe a little bit of the SI and maybe a little bit of the six in terms of saying, well, it comes from Dario. Dario said this, Jung said this, Victor said this. So it's almost a little bit of that, like appeal to authority, but it's it's, it's coming from a place of honesty yeah. in, in the way I'm, because I'm trying to be like scientific in the way I'm defining the functions. I try to do it like empirically rather than doing it in a metaphysical way, which is what Socionics does. Yeah, this is all fascinating. It's great how your extroverted intuition, your any, is able to take ideas like from different disciplines, like so from Socionics and Enneagram and Kirzy and Darionardi, you're able to put them into like one theory in your TI framework. This is like fascinating. Jonathan does yeah. that as well. I mean, he's got Dario's books. He's uh, he knows about Kirzy temperaments, and he's got a and he's steeped in Enneagram uh, <laughs> by now. Um, he might finally let me call him an expert in about six months. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do, are there any other features of SI that, that you reckon I should put? Because you know about functions, George, you're qualified. Is there anything else yeah. you reckon I should put in here? Um, so, it's a lot to read in, in a little sitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my... oh, sorry. My introverted intuition needs to like sit on it and like process it and tell you like right. in a few days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I do. Uh, oh yeah. So I rich so I was inspired by Victor Glenka's like DCNH, and originally I had a normalizing subfunction in there, but really it was just sort of repeating the assertive, but just sort of less assertive. And then I thought, hang on a minute, there isn't really a normalizing subfunction, and it, and I thought I'll just put that to the core level, and so that's why it's down to three from four. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then, okay, okay, for any, 